Hold on on tight tight for the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the the alternative alternative to the alternative alternative media. It's a place, a, place, a, special, a special place, place where, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Affirmative. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, people of all races, colors, and creed, it's a globalist world. You're listening to the greatest show on earth. Yes, it is, folks. Greg Anthony here, and the reason it's the greatest show on earth is because it's better than knowing you can't shake anybody's hand anymore and you have to stay six feet away from people or they're going to spray you with a bottle of mace or hit you with a stick the show's better than realizing you can't buy a pair of underwear at target anymore because it's not an essential item what is this word essential everything's essential you know i went the other day to target and they wouldn't, they closed off the clothes section. I said, Do you know something? I need a pair of socks. It's essential. And they said, No, sorry, go that way. They're actually in certain areas in these blue states, I call them. So we got blue and red states now. In the red states, it's kind of cool. You can go out to a uh, anywhere, uh, not really in the cities, but a lot of people live on their farms and uh, they go out to the countryside, they go out everywhere. See, get back to nature. But people in the blue states are all clustered together being told. For example, by Eric Garcetti, the mayor of Los Angeles, he said recently that he's going to give rewards to snitches. Yes. And the mafia immediately said, see, I told you to join us a long time ago. We don't want snitches. Yes, you're going to get a reward if you turn in your fellow neighbor who's violating this stay-at-home order. Millions of Americans, 40 states, 50 states, the governor of Michigan told people, when you're home, do not do home improvements. They're telling you not to do home improvements. Then we go to Simi Valley. Called my brother the other day, and he belongs to a country club. Guess what? The other day he said the police came, and they kicked him and his wife off the country club. People in the community were up in arms. But there's other people in the community who are at the Citizens Watch Group that are checking on these people and turning them in. What's their reward, by the way? i, I got to find out. <laughs> What's their reward? You get a badge saying, you belong to the government New World Order. You do not question anything. You are no longer a thinking human being. You are a robot. Well, anyway, I called him the other day, and I said, hey, Paul, how you doing? He said, fine. Me and my wife are walking on the golf course. I said, fantastic. What, 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 what's the score? How are you playing? He goes, oh, no, they won't let us play golf. They'll just let us walk on the course. I said, what the heck is that? <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, the government's telling you everything, and I hope you people enjoy it. Now, this show, boy, I know millions of people are coming to it because it's really the only one where you can really get a laugh these days. You know, and t- stay tuned tomorrow. You know, I want to say this. I got a call from a couple people in San Diego who I used to do stand up comedy with. And now there's no comedy clubs open. And so I immediately said, let me come. You know, I'll bring my own laugh machine. I will not be humiliated anymore because, you know, nothing worse than getting up on a comedy stage. And isn't it interesting that ever this is the time. There's nothing, everybody's thinking about death and dying, aren't they? Now, I have about a 13, 15-minute routine on death and dying. I won't do it today, because I'm going to save it for the comedy club, right? But really, isn't it interesting? You know, if you're a comedian, and you get out there, you go, oh, (laughs) oh, man, they were dead tonight. Boy, it was like a morgue in here. Nobody left. (laughs) And then is it an interesting, if I have a great night, I'll go something, boy, I really killed that audience. I shut them all down. <laughs> you know, it's either me or you, folks. It's either me or you. But death and dying, it's one thing we all have in common. But one thing I can tell you, just as a lead into my 15 minute skit on death and dying, which is really a hit today. That's all we hear every day, right? 30,142 and a half people died of COVID virus. 
The half? Where'd you get that, Dr. Death Fauci? <laughs> I had a dream the other night. He was Dracula. Dr. Fauci, that little jockey who's masquerading as a doctor, says, in my dream, he goes, I want your blood, your COVID blood. And then this guy who looked like Frankenstein turned out to be Trump, said, no, doctor, doctor, no, Dr. Dracula, don't do that. We need some people to work. Even though we're going to have basically robots, we need some people to work when I tell them they can go back. Oh, what a dream that was. I woke up in a cold sweat, realized I couldn't go anywhere, and I just said, oh, hell, what is going on? You know, and so death and dying is one thing we all have in common, but we're also frightened of it, aren't we? Now, what's there to be frightened? You know, when you're going to die? When you're going to die? You're always worried about dying, but, you know, it's one thing we all are going to do one day. And, you know, one thing I can tell you, and then I will stop and save it for the big show is that nobody, you know, I've watched people die in the past. I mean, we all have lived before the COVID virus, and people do die. In fact, the statistics are 7,400 people in America die every day. That was before the COVID virus. Now it's 7,401, and that one person got hit by a pig, and they said, falling from a second-floor balcony, and they said it was a COVID virus death. So it's about the same. People have been doing the statistics and people are dying. But one thing I can tell you, everybody doesn't die at the same time. You know, that's one thing I know for sure. I've lived a little bit of a while. So, you, you know, don't worry about going outside, I don't think. I'm giving you an order. You know, put it this way. Why are people actually listening to this? I know most people are going, you know, I hate this government. I don't care what's going on. You know, what? But they stay home. Why? Because now they're clamping down. People are seeing, like, military vehicles coming into Los Angeles. And then they're hearing about the guy on the paddleboard that got arrested for being in the ocean in Malibu. Or the other guy that got arrested because he was putting his scuba tank on and he couldn't go in the water. And then all these other people, fines, $1,000 if you open up your business. I mean, what's this? Now, let's just give them the benefit of the doubt for one moment here. Let's say that there was a real pandemic, not this fake one that they're doing on their reality show. What would be the reaction? Well, you want to keep people healthy, right? So you let them go outside. I mean, if we all are going to get something, they say we're all getting it, then why can't we go out? And if 99.9% .9 of the people are going to be okay, then what the hell's the difference between this and what happened before this. Nothing. It's just a propaganda arm. Today I watched the most unbelievable thing for all you uh, people that were wondering, how come we can't celebrate Easter? You know, and I respect all your belief systems. And when it comes to death, too, there's a lot of different ideas about it, you know. And I have always wondered, there's so many ideas about death, well, what about this? If we just, if you think, of, if you think, you know, you're going to go somewhere after death. Maybe you do. You know, why not? You know, like certain Christians have a belief they're going to heaven. Well, maybe they're going to go. Other people are going, you ever meet the guy? Oh, boy, just damn me to hell. That's where I'm going, to hell. Well, maybe he's going there. And then, for example, we have the people that believe in reincarnation. And this is a big subject now because they're, that's all we hear every day, death and dying, from Dr. Death Statistics, Mr. Fauci. Get rid of that guy. You know, get a new guy up there. At least I can see. He comes to the microphone and I see his forehead. Nothing against short people. I'm not exactly uh, Shaquille O'Neal either. But anyway, <laughs> reincarnation's an idea. But let's think about this. Now, in some Christian circles, we started out with maybe two people in the world. That's two souls. Then maybe there were five or six. Some people say seven. And all of a sudden now we got, what, six billion souls? How could that be? If they only came back, how did they multiply? Somebody's got to be making these souls somewhere. New souls. It's a new business, making new souls. But I just couldn't figure out the numbers in that reincarnation idea. Not to say that it's not going to uh, happen, you know. I don't look forward, though, coming back as a worm for the way I've lived. <laughs> or maybe I'll come back as a king, the emperor. Yes, come back and I can tell everybody when they can go out to play and when they can't. And by the way, 
I know there's a lot of Americans out there who are feeling like a child again. You know, remember when your mother and father grounded you? Oh, it's happened to everybody. Yeah, grounded you. And what did you do? You were thinking of the quickest way to get out of your room. Open the window at midnight and go have a ball with your friends who are also grounded. How many times do we do that? And then you hear your parents coming, oh, he's going to get it. You know, whatever happened to the old days, you know? <laughs> when, you know, for example, we weren't the greatest kids. You know, I'm not saying we were criminals, but, you know, we borderline having fun with adults was our pastime. You know, like painting something on their garage or, you know, I guess that could be considered criminal damage to property. But back then, all of our uncles and, for, and dads and everybody were Chicago policemen. So anyway, I can tell you story after story of little pranks we used to do. But now nobody can go out. Oh, no, I was thinking today, what about these kids who want to go out and play? Well, now they go to this Internet. And everybody's not real anymore. It's all a virtual world. There's no real people, really, anymore. Let me tell you this. All the people have disappeared, and everybody's just phony on the Internet. Yep, yep, even me. I don't even know who I am anymore after this COVID virus thing. I'm going, what the heck kind of world is this? But anyway, death and dying, reincarnation, all the different ideas, and maybe, just maybe, Wherever you think you're going to go, you're actually going to go, you know? But anyway, let me get back to, what the heck was I talking about? Isn't it easy just to get off on a tangent on this? I don't know if you're like me, but I have a hundred million really serious things I've been looking at over the months of this crazy lockdown, and bar none, bar none, listen. And I've been around a little bit of while trying to spread peace and freedom and, and uh, all these things to wake up America and say, listen, do you know who your enemy is? And one day your enemy's going to shut down everything and turn it into a one-world government, one-world order. And people said, oh, Greg, you're crazy. Now I got people that are con conservatives calling me. You know, people that, you know, would want me hung, you know, in the town square for saying, you know, the Vatican Jesuit-led new world order. Now they're going, Craig. Can you tell us what's wrong? What's happened? They're about ready to listen to anything. And you know that's what you're getting in this. And let me break it down first. I just got to throw out a number here that really, you know, I could throw out hundreds of numbers that don't make sense with this thing. And hundreds of stories. But let me just focus on one thing. Let's try to focus. You know, focus. I love that word. Focus. No, focus, focus. Uh, anyway, focus is a idea that you've got to look at two things here. Now, before the COVID virus, right, there was something called influenza B. This was by the CDC telling us this. Now, they're not talking about this now. But this is the inconsistencies I see that make no sense. From October 9, uh, 2019 to February, they said that from 12,000 to 30,000 people died from influenza B. There was no lockdown of the country. There was no testing. There were no fake triages being set up behind uh, Billy Graham's son this morning. <laughs> Did you see that? Or Sunday morning. Did you see that? I'll talk about that in a minute. It was nothing. In fact, it was a huge, a lot of people died. Break it down, and it's a lot. But they weren't sure. It was anywhere from 12 to 30,000, right? 12 to 30,000 people. Now, <laughs> how, just one month later, these brainchilds over at CDC and uh, the WHO, who, that's really the band running this whole thing, the WHO band. They decided to start a health organization, you know, because uh, they got tired of being on drugs their whole life, so they turned over a new leaf. But anyway, uh, all of a sudden, they figured out that they could figure this one out to the T, telling you in each country of the world, over 150, I turn every country on, and I go, okay, how many people died today? Uh, how many people died from this supposed pandemic, covert, covert 19, I call it? And they can tell you to the T in every country, Poland, Russia, 
of Africa, the littlest towns in Africa. They don't even know how many people live there, but they know how many people died there. Then they come to America, which is supposedly the biggest and the greatest medical system in the world. And we got more people, you know, going, meeting their maker. Supposedly, I don't, you know, like I said, people died before this. And we still seem to run a country. I mean, you, death, folks, you got to look at it this way, man. You know, everybody's worried about it. Every day you wake up, you know, and you worry, am I going to die today? And then it usually, though, happens at the most inconvenient times. So don't worry about it. You're not all going to walk out and die from this. But usually it happens, at least from people I know. I haven't yet experienced that final day, final moment, when the bell tolls, things like that. But, you know, it happens like a, a person just says goodbye, going to the grocery store, and boom, he's gone person says, I'm going out to walk Charlie the dog, and boom, has a heart attack. Gone. Never expecting it. So, you know, it's an unpredictable thing, but it's something we all are going to meet one day. So it's a part of life. We have to get over it. And guess what? Guess what? Death isn't so bad once it happens. It's getting to their point that's terrible for a lot of people. But once you get there... It's not so bad, you know. Like Mark Twain said, I, I don't fear death. I'd been di dead for millions of years before being born and didn't suffer in the slightest. But it's that getting there that's important. That's really difficult for people. And everybody's worried about that today because they tell you that every day. If you walk outside without your mask, if you walk outside without, you know, I don't go anywhere anymore in America. Well, I don't live there right now. I just decided to leave, and I'll tell you why. Because it isn't very much fun anymore. I mean, who can you go out and play with? That was the whole thing that I enjoyed America for, going out and playing. You know, I never called it work. Go out, enjoy the life, go meet a person, and enjoy listening to them talk. I was a storyteller, and I'm going to tell you a story today in the second half hour. <laughs> because I've got an inside story that there's a second revolution on the horizon. Yes, the second American Revolution is coming, folks. I don't want to believe anything anymore, but I, believe, I think that it's time. Yeah, second revolution. When they shut down baseball, that's the end of the story for me. And I've got the inside story on that. But listen, listen, this is not, go this is not going to end. I was listening today a few serious things. So that, that, that statistic, that one statistic about influenza B is important. But I was also curious, because a lot of people have been asking this question. They go, when's it going to end? Well, there's a lot of theories on that. But there has been a, you got to find this out, and I'll put it on my website. It's a long document. I don't know how they write these things. A government document about the plans for co how to live in a COVID-19 world. It's a lot of pages, probably as long as the Patriot Act that was written by a Jesuit lawyer at Georgetown University named Mr. Vin Dim, and it was like 300 pages written before 9-11, so maybe they did the same thing, but people are saying, oh, it's going to be one month? When can we go back? Two months? When's the emperor going to tell us we can go back to work? Well, this report says this could last 18 months and then more, and so they've got this whole strategy you know, and then in the report it said there will be breaks in the supply lines. There will be shortages of this, that, and the other. So, that's in their report. Now, it was supposedly leaked to the New York Times. And you know what that means? They gave it to them to scare, scare you to death. <laughs> that's what they did. Because the New York Times, they don't get it and say, oh, we got something from the government they shouldn't. They've worked together. So anyway, that's what this report reads, and it's very long, and con I don't know how they figure all these things out. There's a part there where they talk about how many boxes they're going to need, how they're going to take care of all the bodies, you know, things that are really you know, out of some science fiction movie, but it's actually happening because they can create their own reality show here. It's like, that's, w that's why these, you know, remember, I used to get angry at, you know, these how-to books or these motivation books. You know, if, you gotta, if you're motivated enough to go get a book, you don't need it, you know. 
a motivation book. What the heck? If you have to get... <laughs> Come on. And then these how-to books. Telling you how to do everything. You know, listen, my friend, I used to tell them, I know the difference between a hammer and a screwdriver. And in fact, part of the greatest thing is to do things on your own without you telling me. But isn't it exactly what the government is doing? I've, I'm going through these, I'm, these videos. How to wash your hands when to do it, what kind of, make sure your fingernails are cut. Uh, I mean, it's getting right down to keep your hair at a distance so it doesn't get in your eyes so that you don't go to your face as much. Do you believe that? Telling you how to grow your hair? I said, oh, okay, I said, I'll listen. I went to the barber the other day, and he comes out with a pair of hedge clippers to cut my hair. I go, what are you doing? He says, I got to stay six feet away. <laughs> I said, listen, pal. I got to get out of here because if I sneeze, you're going to call the police and arrest me. <laughs> you know something? What are we doing? I mean, even the most conservative people are calling me going, Greg, what's happening? As if I know, you know, I mean, I know that it's a reality show. And so after those how-to books... I got really disgusted with TV when I saw these reality shows, you know, the Kardashians, and all of these people, narcissistic as, as you get, as get out, getting on TV and showing off. I mean, then they had every, I mean, every possible reality show. We remember the reason Trump is there. He had, remember his, he had The Apprentice. That reality show was number one box office special. So they said, hey, this guy's going to make a good president because we're going to need him when we, you know, run this COVID-19 reality show. He'll be perfect for it. And let me say he's doing a great job. So anyway, we have this whole mess going on. Confusion after, you know, I mean, it's just a confusing mess. You watch these videos telling you what to do every day. The government saying you can't go out. My solution to that is I look back to the roaring 20s when the government was trying to tell you you can't have a beer. What happened? Speakeasies opened up. Black markets, that's what we got to do. Heck with them. If we all started a business now and didn't pay taxes, what are they going to do? Put us all in jail? <laughs> but you know what's happening? They have divided the country and conquered us. Because half of the people want to see people that do that in jail. They don't have, we don't have people who really believe in freedom. We have people who believe in the reality message of propaganda belief in freedom that they tell us it doesn't exist. And for those of you out there who want it, who believe in it, you can see what's going to happen to you. You're going to be isolated like they're doing now. They're telling people, everybody over 60, you shouldn't go out. You can't work. You can't do it. You stay home. You're going to die. Well, hell, I don't care. <laughs> Most people at the age of, you know, when they're in their later days, uh, they become a little more reckless. Let's go out. And, you know, you, you've seen the movies, you know, rob three banks. Who, what are they going to do? They put us in jail for life. I only got like two years to live. So, I mean, give me a break. And anyway, if they're going to isolate people, they're going to isolate all those old fogies that are running our country. <laughs> Think about it. Biden's like 78. Trump's in his 70s. Pence is old. P Pelosi's 80. They're all up there and senior citizens. What are you going to do with them? Oh, no, they don't have to be isolated. They can go to work. And by the way, has somebody looked into whether the Congress is still getting paid? Or are they getting part of that trillion-dollar payoff? No, they're getting paid. They're not even working. They're, they're, they're getting paid. The president's getting paid. Oh, he's so rich, he just gives his money to somebody. But all those people are getting paid. The governors of your states are getting paid. The state representatives are getting paid. And all the workers that are keeping you in are getting paid. There's more workers out there in the country keeping you in. But that's okay. Now, if they went away and let us go outside, it would be the same amount of people. Back in three minutes on the Investigatore Giornale. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app. 
for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border dot org c-r-o-s-s cross the border dot org to get your print epub or pdf version of nicholas arthur's new book titled when the third temple is built that's cross the border dot org the following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off limits by the, by the supreme, supreme jesuit, jesuit command, command but stay on call people, people. Listen, listen up, up, and, up you and you may, may just, just learn, learn something, something. Okay, folks, we're back for the second half hour of the Monday show. What a what a great world it is, though. You know, depending on your point of view, I always try to turn. Oh, isn't it the greatest expression? Lemons into lemonade, <laughs> right? I love it. But anyway, I'm overlooking a beautiful bay. I took a. Well, yes, I went to a restaurant today. You guys are probably all jealous. And there was actually a band playing several, there were children, there was all the risk groups, uh, all old people were there, children, and uh, no buffet, uh, but the food was really good. And you're probably wondering, where's the restaurant? Tell us, we can't find one open. And that's true in a lot of places, millions of people deprived of that joy of sitting across or inviting your girlfriend out. How are you going to get married now? I mean, you can't... I usually thought that people, they always take their fiancé to a dinner. You know, where are you going to go now? Going to have to go to the woods and eat with the three bears. Yep, they got a little hideaway, I heard. And out in the woods, yes, you can go to the national parks, and the bears are actually opening up restaurants. <laughs> Come to Mama Bears. Yes. And the bears figure, hey, we can make a lot of money here. They can't be around people, but they can be around us. So you got bear restaurants, the, the wolves. You've even got some vegetarian restaurants. Well, they're all vegetarian because they don't want you to eat meat. You can see why, you know. <laughs> you go in there and eat the, eat the owner. But anyway, uh, this is, you know, it's just amazing how beautiful the world is here. And you're probably wondering, what, where do you live? He must live in a red state. He must live somewhere in South Dakota. I heard South Dakota. Is it still free? Everybody's moving. I'm calling South Dakota tomorrow and see if I can come there and actually go out to a restaurant. But anyway, let's all move to South Dakota. Just everybody pack up South Dakota, North Dakota. I heard they're the last two states 
That was as of Friday, so I don't know if they're still free. So I'm not in a red state. I'm, of course, not in a blue state. And I'm, of course, not anywhere in Italy where I used to live because they shut that place down. I can't believe it. As soon as it opens up, I'm going there, and I'm allowed to fly. Uh, I imagine I could take a boat. You know, That'd be more fun anyway. Just uh, get on a freighter illegally. You know, hide in the freight freighter and go there in one of those big boxes if they're delivering anything. But anyway, no, I'm not in any of those places. I am in good old Mexico. Yes. And boy, let me tell you some strange things. Well, gringos coming here left and right now. They used to come here a lot, but now more and more giving me a call. Hey, where can I find a house there? You can go to a restaurant. The other day, though, I said, well, I don't want too many of them here. I'm walking down the street. In a nice, quiet area. I mean, dirt road in the mountains. And this American woman who lives near us uh, was walking and looked at the true story. You know, don't never believe anybody who says it's a true story. But this is a true story. Uh, she looks at me and goes, stay six, six feet away and stop breathing. Uh, and true, I said, <laughs> when can I stop? you got to kill me if I stop breathing. But that's exactly what she said. I mean, it's insanity. And so I said, I don't want too many gringos here. Now, things aren't normal, normal in Mexico, but there's a lot more people here that are just saying, you know, i got to feed my family, and I'm going to risk getting a cold or the flu because I'm going to die otherwise. I mean, people got to go. Got to, got to, got to have a living, you know. And don't expect that government money to keep coming. I mean, that's nothing, a drop in the bucket. you got to get out and work, do things. So, I mean... Get out there, black market, you know, the, remember in the, the Roaring Twenties, you know, they opened up restaurants and when they couldn't sell booze, you could find a restaurant that sold booze. Hopefully you can find a restaurant, a, a daring person, a 007 restaurant tour who's not afraid of the COVID virus police. Yes, that's what it is. They're all cracking down on you, everything you want to do. But don't worry, they'll tell you how to live. They'll tell you how to do everything. One, one last thing with this. Uh, come back tomorrow because we got so many crazy... I just touched uh, the tip of the iceberg on crazy things that are happening in the world. And you can know you can come to my show to get another view. I mean, we have the mainstream media barraging you, just slamming you to death with all of these death statistics and horror stories. Every hospital in the United States is full of patients. They got trucks back refrigerated trucks backed up putting bodies in i mean it's uh, then there's testing sites that are overflowing but in any of those pictures i don't there i've seen the same picture about 800 times with the doctors in the one emergency room that just happened to be an emergency room in italy and they said it was in boston and that's going on all over the place they're showing you these looped pictures when they need to scare you more and guess what? That's what you're getting there. So you're getting your daily full of COVID stuff. You know everything about how you're going to die or could die, be safe, you know, the whole works. We'll protect you, and we'll tell you when it's safe to go out, and then we're going to take all the credit for saving so many lives. That's their story. Then you go to the truthful people that are really going actually to the hospital. I believe them more, these citizen journalists and they're finding a completely different story empty hospitals testing centers empty nobody in the refrigerated trucks and guess what they said ambulances are so busy we don't have enough they drove by every one of these places that was reported on the news and they're all sitting there playing video games one ambulance driver said hey they asked them how many covid patients 100 no 50 25 he said three and did you test them? No. What were the symptoms? Well, cough. Oh, okay. Like I said, they got you believing that everybody has it or can get it. And you can also pass it on if you're asymptomatic. Okay. Now, I don't know if this has probably existed in other cases of influenza, but it didn't shut down an economy or they didn't tell you how to brush your teeth and comb your hair. And also, you know, 
don't sneeze in a restaurant or you'll be arrested. Well, what they got you doing is, you know, I know there's a lot of people that would like to go out and they are not afraid of this. What's happening is they're going to blame you for infecting others. And then you've got your citizens who are reporting you to the police. And then the police are actually coming out. In Michigan, they're stopping people. And they're, you know, the temperature thing will come. They're going to be taking your temperature. Then the certificates are going to be coming where after this thing, you're going to have to prove that you're not, you know, going to kill somebody with a cough. And so it's Mr. Control has taken over. But anyway, where's it all going? People have always asked me, where is it all going? And we'll be back tomorrow with some more. <laughs> you come here, really, because that's what you get. In the Then you get the alternative media with all the theories of, you know, was it the CIA? Was it the Chinese? It's been, you know, uh, kind of like, uh, we don't know where it came from. It could be dangerous. It could be that you're going to be bleeding from your eyes. So you're getting a whole different for fear scenario on the alternative media. And you don't know what to believe. But the point is, on my show, we just oversee everything and then say, listen, this is the human experience. This is humanity at its worst and its best. And actually, we're going to just look at it and give you every opportunity on this show to enjoy as much of life as you can that you have left, no matter if you're going to die tomorrow or in 10 years or in 50 years. Like I said, it's in the cards for all of us. And it usually happens when you don't expect it. That's at least my experience. But anyway, it's something that we look at a little differently here. And so I'm giving a person an opportunity from every walk of life. I say in the beginning of my show, all races, colors, and creeds, any persuasion, any belief system to come and to share your stories about this and you also laugh along with us because tragedy plus time equals comedy and we've been in our homes long enough to get some comic relief, haven't we? But anyway, where's it going? Well, there is American Revolution coming because when they stopped baseball, that was the final straw at least for freedom fighter Slats Grobnik. Now, Slats is a longtime friend of mine. He's been fighting the Vatican Jesuit-led New World Order, all its tentacles, for the better part of three decades. He's never stopped, and he's been doing it ever since his days in Chicago when he had to fight Mayor Daley and the Democratic machine. And boy, that's when I got to know Slats at Sam's Tavern, in good old Chicago, and I've never lost faith in my freedom fighter. Through all the years, one of his craziest ideas was to build a replica Roman Colosseum in a Kansas cornfield. And everybody laughed at him. He finally finished it, folks. And guess what happened? Nobody can come because nobody can go outside. Well, anyway, he has begun the American Revolution, and I wrote a story about it part one, because it's really getting good. And you know there's half the people in America who are fed up with this, would love to do it, but don't know how anymore. But Slats said it's time to take a stance. Give me baseball or give me death is General Slats Grobnik's call to arms. It's better. It's really better than the Boston Tea Party. I mean, when you stop baseball, that's, in our culture, that's serious. And Slats Grobnik called me about a week ago, with his plans. And I wrote a story about it. And I said, Slats Grobnik looked out over a Kansas cornfield standing atop his replica Roman Colosseum. You know, he saw an America put to sleep by an occult spell. No lights in the distance, no cars on the interstate. It was as if the whole country drank a witch's brew from the dark ages and fell into a deep sleep. It finally happened after all these years and nobody listened. The Vatican Jesuit PSYOP's invisible black plague has arrived, said Slats to me, thinking he could never now fill the 100,000 seats in the Colosseum since everyone in America was frightened to leave their homes. How could this be? 
Just when I was ready to open my dream theme park, these scoundrels, these infiltrators taking us down from within, beat me to the punch and shut the world down. One day, everybody wanted to buy tickets to see the elites fight it out in my Coliseum. And now even Wrigley Field is closed. Ooh, this is a natural break in the story, but anyway, I'll continue. He stood silent for a minute, picking up an authentic Julius Caesar sword he once stole from the Vatican archives during his years in Rome, working as a spy for the underground Protestant resistance. Waving that sword wildly above his head, he proclaimed, Shutting down Wrigley Field is an act of war, he said. Let the revolution begin. Whew. Serious boy here, huh? And he wasn't kidding. This time, I know slats. He was not kidding. And this time, like so many times in the past, when he threatened revolution, and my, you know, I'm adding this. My, I've known him for 25 years. He's threatened revolution, I don't know, a hundred times. But this time it was different. This time he mounted his chariot, led by four white horses, looking like Ben-Hur, with reins in one hand and his iPad in the other. And as he rounded that first curve on the bottom of that floor of the Coliseum he built in his Kansas cornfield, he began emailing, texting, tweeting millions of his American followers, fed up with OAC, Bernie Sanders, the Jesuits and globalism, COVID-19, Ebola, you name it, saying, let this revolution begin and text me back if interested. During several rides around the Coliseum floor, the literary, <laughs> he literally, literally, I, I got a, a word misspelled there. Isn't that interesting? I've been writing for God knows how many years, and you can never do a perfect story. That's why I used to have an editor <laughs> when I worked on a newspaper. He literally emailed and texted 160 million Americans, the entire half of the country, who now wore their red MAGA hats in opposition to the other 160 million in the Jesuit globalist army. You see what's happening here? Civil War, Second Revolution, all in one, maybe. <laughs> that should be interesting. But, you know, if you look back in history, most of the colonists didn't really want to break away from England. It took a small group of people, but yet they were instigated by, you know, a number of instigators that had a hidden agenda. This is going to be a little different because the Jesuits really, uh, they want to see civil war, but they want to turn it into something that's going to benefit them. Slats, of course, wants to turn America back over to the freedom lovers, independent, kick all the Jesuits out. Yeah, yeah, that used to be the battle cry of many people in this country when it was formed, and even back as late as the early 1900s. Just do your reading. But bringing his chariot to a stop, he wondered if anybody was really left to fight as he heard the Fox News reports for the last three months that the invisible black plague was sweeping the country, killing everybody in its path. Wow, that's what you hear there. And he also thought it was quite ironic that in this second revolution, the good guys would be wearing red uniforms and the bad guys clad in their blue and white polka dot rainbow colors representing the triumphant world powers of the Vatican City, London, and Washington, D.C. And he proclaimed, this is a great day for America. He said, let my chariot ride, which I save for posterity with a selfie, be remembered like the ride of Paul Revere as a call to arms for all Americans to stop the globalist final push for a one-world government, one-world order. I went to 30 Cub games one summer, long ago, he said. I said, once they stop baseball, this is the final straw. Oh, <laughs> See, this did it. Take away baseball from a Cub fan, and you've got revolution. This is invisible plague they concocted. And hoisted upon the world must be bad, as I see no one in the streets, in the parks, and in the restaurants, ghost towns, all over America. He continued, uh, they have wanted to kill us, 
all for a long time, calling us useless eaters like Kissinger once did. I just hope millions return my texts, and there are enough freedom-fighting, loving, and patriotic Americans ready to fight to the death, ready to heed my call to arms. And as he retired to his quarters, beneath the Coliseum with a roaring first command, he said, I proclaim myself General Slatch Grobnik of the second official American revolution. So we got one, folks. We always have a revolution. It starts with one. That's what they told us. With those words, which will go down in history books, I predict that, important as General Washington's Valley Forge speech, he retired to his military bunker in the bowels of the Coliseum, which he now called Fort Grobnik, headquarters of the Freedom Fighters Army. If at all curious, Slats built his replica Roman Coliseum starting about 15 years ago, best I can recall, as a public stunt at first saying he wanted to round up the New World Order elites and make them fight as gladiators. Not a bad idea. But as time grew on, his publicity stunt grew into a larger, more complicated endeavor. Once, he understood fully the strategy of the Vatican Jesuits to infiltrate and take over America by using their pawns in, our, in government, their presidents, and if they don't, they kill them. Uh, America by controlling every sector of society. Check it out, folks. From within, pep, education, the religion, the politics. His building of the Colosseum became a cause more important than his own life. And his idea was simply to defeat their secret agenda concocted since the formation of this country. He simply wanted to bring the elites working with the Vatican Jesuits to perform as gladiators in front of millions the millions they have persecuted over the years. He wanted to give them a taste of their own medicine and thought the Roman Colosseum idea would catch on. So the idea was to fill the hundred seats with patriots, charging only $10 for admission. Not, not bad. Better than a baseball game. Cheaper. While well, people, you can't even pay to get in one. <laughs> now there's no, bet, no people. You can't have baseball without fans. Come on. While people like Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, George Bush, Elon Musk, Clintons, and Trump, and many more acted as these gladiators, of course, after he trained them to wield the sword and handle a chariot, public service, that he was offering them. He finally completed his project a month ago, but as fate would have it, the rulers of evil had beat him to the draw by bringing on what he heard was this invisible enemy. <laughs> Let me take a break here. You know... I'm a good storyteller, and I think I'm going to start a business. Nobody's going to be able to go out. All you're going to, I can, you know, bedtime stories with Greg, revolutions with Greg, learn about the Jesuits. Maybe I should start a history course, you know, for people. Why not? God knows I, I, they owe me a lot of money from all those lousy history courses I went to in college. But anyway, we got about four minutes, not knowing much. About the Jesuit Black Plague, he began reading about it. He stretched out in his bed patiently, waiting for millions to return his emails. He knew they would. This army would grow and grow. The text, as nightfall came over this desolate America, millions will respond. I know it. My call to arms will be met by courageous and righteous, eager people to take back their country from the clutches of these evildoers. Give me baseball or give me death was his final battle cry, his Boston Tea Party, as he fell into a deep sleep. You know something? He now saw himself on a white horse crossing the Potomac in his Cubs uniform with the Captain C, like Derek Jeter wore, standing for field general emblazoned on his red MAGA hat. Editor's note, don't miss part two as General Grobnik waits patiently for a response to his call to arms for a second American revolution. Better late than never, Slats Grobnik grew up in Chicago and never has given up his fight against America's hidden enemy, which is now about to apply its final death grip on a country with its people asleep at the wheel. Yes, you know, if you want to have fun, follow my second story, and go to my website at Greg Anthony's Journal. Dot WordPress dot com, and you can get all my COVID or COVID-19 pandemic shows that I've done over the months. And boy, I'll tell you, also, I'll let you know, because these two comedy clubs 
are going to open one day. And one of the owners who had checked my uh, internet out, I used to do like five minutes there. He said, man, come on back, Greg, do this, and we'll give you a little bit more time. So I got a gig out of this. Yep, as soon as they open up, I'll be there, and I'll be right in San Diego, and I'll tell you where to go. It'll be fun, because I'm not afraid to go outside. And I bet you nobody, if right now they said, nobody said, if the Cubs went out and played the Cardinals under the table, Somewhere, somehow, without anybody knowing, I'd get thousands of people, and thousands would go. I know I would. I wouldn't care. If I could see one more Cub game, you know, it'd be worth it. Then to sit around like this, isn't it crazy listening? And anyway, it's going to get to the point where you're going to have to just say no. You know, like uh, Nancy Reagan or whatever, say no to drugs. You're going to have to say no to Washington, say no to the emperor. I'm going out anyway. And isn't it going to be fun to think that people are going to go out into the same world that they left? No, it's not going to be the same. Much, much different. And just a little Easter note. You know, I know that it's changed a lot of people's lives, and it's not fair. We're innocent people. We shouldn't be in prison. There are many prisoners also that are there in these jails that are innocent. And, you know, it's interesting, though, uh, I just heard that they're letting out a lot of people that aren't innocent because we know that they violated all these immigration laws and uh, Soros got some way to let them out because it's too dangerous in there. It's interesting, but they want to put us in if we violate. But anyway, today I just turned on the TV. I got the 10-second limit. I turned on Fox just to see, and it was Billy Graham's son giving a Easter speech with a piano player maybe 20 feet away and in the background triages of white you know uh, hospital set up rooms that were all empty what a uh, that really upset me terrible terrible but anyway there was nobody in them back tomorrow on the investigatore giornale the book of revelation says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of jesus christ This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.